Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian Movie Enthusiast. I'm going to continue and possibly finish my Asian television series collection here. So let's get cracking. I just have a few that are Chinese language. First one, Legend of the Condor Heroes. Now they've made and remade this story about a million times. This is the one from 2003, and it stars Zhou Shun. It's also called The Brave Archer. So it's set during the Sword and Sandals era. This uh, wuxia-style television series that's about 42 episodes long, pretty long, focuses on a young swordsman and his love interest as they embark on various adventures and clash with martial arts masters. So this is a very, very high-quality series, I thought. Very uh, interesting. Uh, Zhou Shun doesn't show up until, like, episode 8, I think, but after that she has a ton of screen time and is very charismatic as, like, a master of the beggar sect. She's very intelligent, too, in this. And, uh, yeah, lead actor's good, too. There's some really cool action uh, moments, especially during the latter half of the episodes. And it's totally worth watching. Very hard to find with subtitles. I watched this on YouTube with subtitles. Uh, and I enjoyed it so much I bought the DVD set. Even though I couldn't find it with subs. <laughs> so, just so I had it. So if YouTube ever took it down, I could rewatch it. I won't know what they're saying again. But since I've already seen it, I'll know what's going on. So I, I enjoyed this one. I'm not sure if it's the best of the Condor Heroes series. Because this is the only one that I've seen. But it's it's gotta be it's gotta be up there just because it's it's so good. All right, this one was one I was looking for years. I was looking for this for years. The Tai Chi Master. If that looks familiar, it's because I already covered it on my channel. The the movie. Remember, I mentioned in my review, uh, somebody took this TV series, which was like I forgot how many episodes it was, twenty or something like that and condensed all the action scenes into like a two-hour movie. And I would actually say the movie is highly entertaining. The TV series is is good, but I think the action scenes are kind of the highlights. So if I were to watch it again, I would probably just watch the movie again. Because you're not... I thought there would be like more fighting in this TV series that wasn't covered in the two-hour film cut. But there really isn't. Really, all of the action, at least all the memorable action, is in that movie. And, you know, there's more to the series than the show than, than the action, but, uh, you know, it's really the reason to watch it. That's what makes it so special. So I'm glad I have this, and I'm sure I'll, I'll probably watch it again at some point. But uh, check out the movie if you haven't already, if you want a Tai Chi extravaganza. All right, we're finally going to cover something that I haven't watched yet. Have we? I don't think we've covered one DVD of a movie or TV series that I haven't watched. Well, here we go. Red Sorghum. Now, this is the recent television series from a few years ago starring Zhou Shun. <laughs> Big surprise. Now, uh, you may have seen the movie. If you haven't, watch the movie from uh, the 1980s. It was directed by uh, Zhang Yimou, and it starred Gong Li and Zhang Wen, I think. And that was a very good movie. Uh, this is apparently a TV series based on the same source material, and Zhou Shun plays the lead, so I cannot wait to watch this. I gotta, I gotta get on it. I think it's a little longer. It's a bit of a longer series, but uh, I'll watch it for her. Alright, let's cover this set here, which is a little different. I bought a uh, three-box set of Japanese made-for-TV horror anthology films called the Honto ni Ata Kawai Hanashi, uh, also known as Scary Stories That Really Happened. Uh, this show, let me check my notes on this. I remember it being good, but it wasn't as good as I was hoping. <coughs> let me see here, where are my notes? Yeah, here we go. So it's a box set. It's basically 21, or no, 14, 
Yeah, 21 horror anthologies. So you have seven discs in each box set, and I have three box sets. These are pretty expensive, um, but I was so interested in watching them because I, I found a few very good reviews online. They were good, but don't worry about uh, about buying them if, if you haven't seen them, and you probably haven't. They're not available with English subs. But they're, you know, they're almost like uh, Tales of Terror from Tokyo, although I think the Tales of Terror from Tokyo are actually better than these. <clears throat> so, yeah. That's box one. There's box two. This was one of those blind buys that looking back on it, they were so expensive. I was like, maybe I shouldn't have bought them. <laughs> but I'm still kind of glad I got them. Not really a whole lot to say about those. They're all good. They're, they're, they're good, but... All right, so let's get cracking again here on the box itself. So we've obviously moved to Japan. Those last few boxes were Japanese. So now we go to what is, again, I said in my last video that uh, Jumong was my favorite TV series of all time and that DJ and Gum was, was on its tail, hot on its tail. We got a Japanese show here that's hot on DJ and Gum's tail. And that is... Liar game. This show is just. This show must have been written by a genius. I'm not joking. Um, let me get the premise here. So we have. This was released from 2007 to 2010. A kind hearted, gullible girl is coerced by a secret organization. Alright, to participate in a liar game against other contestants which could result in huge winnings or huge debts, depending on one's ability to scam their opponents. Um, so she, uh, she enlists the help of like a, a con artist. Um, so you have Arika Toda is the lead from the Death Note films. She played, I think, Misa. And then uh, Shota Matsuda as the lead actor. So the great thing about this show, okay, is that you have... You know, the first few episodes focus on, like, real-life conning. But then once you reach, like, episode three, four, or f one of those, you go into, like, this underground complex. And what they do is they'll have some type of a logical game and contestants. Uh, it's hard to explain the games. They're kind of like brain teaser games that rely on probability and deception and mathematics. So you go through and... Uh, you know, they'll say, okay, here's how you play the game. Now, you know, if you win the game, we give you money. If you lose, you're in debt for like an insane amount of money. So it's kind of hard to explain it, but it's phenomenal. Like, whoever came up with these games and whoever came up with the solutions to winning the games must have been a mathematician or a genius or something. Because like, you'll start with a game that has... You're thinking, oh, it's based on chance. This is just like gambling. You know, just, just best bet on chance. But every game, there's a way to win. A 100% foolproof way to win. And the way the games start, you're like, that's impossible. But by the end of every few episodes, when they, shift to e when they finish each game competition, they explain to you, no, no, see, if you did this you would have had a 100% chance of winning the game. And you, your mind is blown like so many times in the show because it's so clever. It's really clever stuff. Um, and it goes for two seasons, I think 20 episodes total. And then they have a, a, a movie, like a theatrical film, I think that shored up everything and concluded everything, which was Liar Game, uh, The Final Stage which I also placed here, even though technically it's a movie, it's really the finale of the TV show. I highly recommend Liar Game. Um, it's my favorite J, J drama, and it's going to be hard for somebody to knock it off its top spot because this is phenomenal. In terms of script writing, it's tough to beat this. It's tough. A lot of fun. All right, next one here. This is more of a uh, downbeat one. Still, life goes on. Now this one, really interesting premise, even though it's kind of downbeat. 
So you have 15 years after his little sister is murdered, a young man befriends the sister of the murderer. Um, 11 episodes long. So you have like the family members of the victim who are devastated, obviously, but the family members of the murderer are suffering problems because they're going through persecution and guilt. Very psychological series. Uh, fantastic dialogue. Long stretches of slow burn suspense in it. It's kind of a drama thriller. Hikari Mitsushima is phenomenal in this. And you have uh, you have Ita, I think, is the, yeah, Ita is the lead role. So this, it's really kind of emotionally devastating. Uh, but it's so well written, it doesn't feel manipulative. Awesome stuff. If you want a darker J drama, go to this one. I'm telling you that right now. Still, life goes on. And uh, we go back for some more Hikari Mitsushima in uh, Woman. So in this one, she's... Uh, let me get the premise again, right? Still Life Goes On was 2011. Woman was 2013. Again, a drama. After her husband dies in an accident... A young woman must raise her two children while attempting to reconcile with the mother that abandoned her as a child. 11 episodes long. Same script writer as still life goes on. So the script writing is phenomenal in this. Um, you know, the characters kind of iron out their differences. But uh, there's some resentment left over for, for, from uh, prior events. A lot of complexity. Hikari Mitsushima in this show... This is one of the best performances I've ever seen, like in anything, movie or television. Uh, yeah, it's it's phenomenal. There's some scenes in this that are really, really dramatically effective. Um, so I highly rec recommend Woman. Next one here, we've already covered it, at least season one on my channel. I have a separate review of it that I just put up recently. Trick, Hiroshi Abe. Yukie Nakama. Check out my review, my separate review of this. Love it. You got the amateur magician and the physics professor trying to debunk uh, various spiritualists who are attempting to con people out of their money. I got Trick Season 2. I believe that's Trick Season 2 here. I'm so glad I have all the seasons on DVD. Again, these Japanese TV series are kind of hard to find with subtitles. You got to you got to look for them a lot. You know what I mean? And I bought these years ago, so I don't even know if they're still around. Love this show. Love it. All right. Next one here is one that's a little lesser known. And that is Antiquarian Bookshop. Biblia's Case Files. Um, really, really enjoyed this one. Uh, let's see here. It's got uh, Ayame Goriki in it, who is an actress that some people criticize, but uh, I thought she was great in this. This is the first thing I ever saw her in, and I became a fan after that. A young man teams up with a perceptive librarian to solve mysteries that are connected with works of literature and the people who read them. Eleven episodes. You know, if you haven't, if you haven't uh, discovered yet, the Japanese dramas are usually shorter than, than Korean dramas. You're talking like 11 episodes of 45 minutes each compared to like 16 plus episodes at a full hour each. So you could churn through J-dramas a lot faster. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, there's some, this has an intelligent script, clever logic, some good mysteries. Uh, there's also a strong romantic undercurrent between the two main characters that doesn't really come to the forefront much, which I kind of liked. Uh, the temperament of this actress is perfect for this role. And uh, the soundtrack uses the theme to the never-ending story, which is a nice touch. Way to earn brownie points. Earn brownie points. Yeah, I really enjoyed this one, too. Next one, I might be cheating a little bit because it's a mini-series. And I will be covering it in more detail when I do my Takashi Miike filmography review that I've been promising for, like, 17 or 18 months now. <laughs> it's coming. I promise. I'm trying. 
It's 80 movies I gotta write up. Reviews I gotta write up for that. This is MPD Psycho from Mike. Now this has probably the most interesting script of any of his films. Uh, well, technically it's a miniseries. It's like six episodes long. Pretty short. Six hours. You have uh, a detective with multiple personality disorder. One of his personalities escapes his body and goes on a killing spree. It like uh, possesses people and jumps between people and goes on a murder spree. He's got to take them down. Super interesting story. I'm actually going to do a uh, spoiler review of this separate from the Mike uh, filmography where I go through all the details. Very complex, mind bending, excuse me, mini series that you really have to pay attention. You know what I mean? There's a lot of details in this, and it's very complicated. So, uh, you know, I'll cover this later. Very cool, though. Very cool show. Kind of creepy and weird, too. Chaki Kuriyama shows up uh, in an episode. It's Aya Ueto time. Another actress that gets criticized a lot for good reason. She's uneven. She starred in Azumi, uh, which is just a fantastic film. Ataku number one. It's about volleyball. Girls volleyball. And it doesn't mess around. <laughs> it's pretty. It gets pretty cheesy at times, obviously. Um, you know, uh, you know, it focuses on girls volleyball. And, uh, you know, the competitions and tournaments that they focus on. There's actually a pretty good dramatic basis to this. I thought that some of the characters were actually well developed. The conflicts were well developed. Some of the rivalries that are established between the characters are, are quite a bit of fun. I thought this was a lot of fun. Another one I got to rewatch. I haven't seen this. Man, it might be like 10 years I haven't watched this. I got to check this one out again. Fun. It's a fun show, I thought. Another one with Ayame Guriki, the private detective that I don't like. <laughs> quite, a, uh, quite a title there. Um, it's a comedy, as, you, as if you couldn't tell, from 2014. After being extorted by his cute landlord, a private detective takes her along on his investigations. So she's very good in this again. High energy and lots of fun. Only eight episodes long. This doesn't get too serious. You know, some TV shows just try to get serious just, just to get serious. You know, this one doesn't do that. Um, it doesn't do that. It doesn't fall into that trap. Some of the, uh, this girl is a terrible detective, so she doesn't really help the guy out too much. Um, so whenever the, she'll always provide some type of crazy explanation for, for the crime that's just not even close to the truth, which is really quite funny. So I like this show. Again, very not well known. The last few we covered, uh, MPD Cycle is pretty well known if you're a Mike fan, but the other few we've covered recently, not too well known. Very good. Man, I want to rewatch all these now. Man. Next one was okay. Kind of a disappointment. And that is unfair. Lead actress is alright. I thought she could have done better. <clears throat> this one is like kind of a... Uh, it's a drama thriller. Nine episodes. Or eleven episodes on this. A lady cop attempts to solve a series of murders. Pretty generic. I thought this to be a little bit uninspired and bland at spots, but uh, the later episodes get stronger and stronger. You know, they focus on a different antagonist who has more deceptive means of uh, committing crimes, and that increases my interest. So, yeah, unfair is okay, but uh, not particularly worth watching or, or seeking out. Next one. Koshi Bizaki. The whole reason I watched this is because Koshi Bizaki's in it. She was in. Uh, she was a crazy girl from Battle Royal, and she starred in One Miss Call. And that's Orange Days. This one was really good, very solid. Again, a lot of my dramas are kind of older. This one's two thousand four. A lot of the two thousands here. Romance. College student falls for a deaf mute violinist played by Ko while contributing to a diary maintained by a small group of friends. 11 episodes. Supporting characters are good. 
Um, Shibazaki, this is one of her better performances in this. She does a really good job of expressing emotion without using uh, her voice. You know what I mean? Very, very good performance. Could be her best of her career, actually. Uh, there's sign language a lot that's used. <clears throat> uh, pretty good tempo. And uh, I recommend Orange Days if you haven't seen it. And actually, uh, this actually has Satoshi Sumabuki and Eita in it too, who are really popular actors nowadays. So this has a good cast. I recommend Orange Days. Again, I got to increase to my Japanese J drama collection a little bit. A little harder to find J dramas, though, as I've said. All right, so you have Takashi Shimitsu directed a TV series, and it's a horror comedy, believe it or not. Shimitsu directing a comedy? The Great Horror Family. This one, again, 2004. Uh, a family moves into a house that just so happens to be a gateway to the spiritual world. Scares and hilarity ensue. 13 episodes. There's lots of different legends and folklore in this. A lot of diversity and imagination. So, you know, there might be an episode about a portrait that takes away people's happiness. Then you'll have an episode about a poltergeist who remodels homes in illogical maze-like fashions and stuff like that. So this is pretty creative. It's fun. The humor is actually pretty laid back in this, which I appreciate it. So check out The Great Horror Family if you haven't already. Man, you actually have some special features on this, too. So... I don't really have that many special features on my my Asian movie DVD, uh, television DVDs. It's good. <clears throat> now we got a few in a row here that I found disappointing. They're both horror TV series. You got One Miss Call. Yes, there was a One Miss Call television series. I thought I was, yeah, I didn't, it didn't really, it wasn't consistent with the movie. And it didn't, uh, it didn't even feel like a horror series. It felt more, more like a, I don't know. A toothless drama is really what it was, you know? I don't know. Maybe I'll give it an, another second chance since I have it in my collection. You know, I'll give it a second chance, but uh, I don't know. I thought it was just okay. you think they would have built on the mythology more. Or just All you have to do is have one missed calls go on for the series and just continue where the movie left off. Or do your own storyline and mix it up a little bit. But it didn't really seem to... The horror was real light in this. Another one that was disappointing was The Demon Ward. This one takes place, I think, at a hospital. It's horror-based. This lead actress, Kaho, was excellent in Puzzle, a Japanese film from 2014. Um, first time I saw her was in this, and I thought she... Maybe it was what the material they gave her, because I like her now as an actress, but she's not good in this. A very whiny character. Had one facial expression throughout the entire TV show. So I, I think the writing kind of hurt her in this. Um, yeah, I didn't really like Demon Ward. Here's an interesting... Man, we're going long. 23 minutes. Whatever. You got time, right? Just... Pause the video, grab some snacks. Got about 10 minutes left, I think. This is one that I blind bought while I was in Japan uh, a few years ago. And I only watched it recently before I went again. Because I was like, man, I gotta watch this before I go back. And that's Yokai Monogatari. Now this, I checked online. It actually is available uh, without subtitles on certain websites. Maybe CG, CD Japan has it, maybe, or something. So I didn't even know what this was. It was like 19 bucks at uh, Book Off. You know, that's where I go now. I finally found a decent, you know, uh, place in Japan called Book Off. And it's got different uh, locations throughout. And uh, they, they have some pretty good deals. Now, this is about the yokai monsters of Japanese folklore. And you have four discs... Okay, now these four discs, I was assuming they'd be like 50 minutes each. Each of these discs is like an hour and a half each, or even more than that. So you have almost like seven hours, okay? And what you get here is you get like a painting that's shown to you on the screen. 
you have an introduction to like the you have an, the name of the yokai monster and then the guy talks about what it is now since i don't know japanese that doesn't help me but when you have a painting in front of you and some really ominous scoring behind it to get create atmosphere and somebody only talks for about 30 seconds to a minute on each monster and moves it moves from monster to monster it's almost like going to like an art museum in japan if you were to see an exhibition on yokai it's phenomenal i love this like you could it, it it's way more entertaining than you might think even though you don't know what they're saying if you don't know japanese these four dvds cover i didn't count it's got to be almost a thousand yokai monsters are covered in this it's ridiculous and uh you know, you, you got a lot of familiar ones, tons of ones that I didn't even know about. So it's really interesting because they have so many really nicely drawn paintings and pictures. And there's so many that shown to you. It's like I said, it's like going to an art exhibition in Japan. Um, I recommend this if you're interested in yokai monsters and Japanese folklore. Uh, here's one that's quite uh, <clears throat> schlocky. <laughs> first class starting my uh well they're all my girls right arika sawajiri um you know subsequent to her comeback to the industry this one's about the the vicious uh industry of fashion and she's trying to survive in it and succeed um you know i guess some people would compare it to the devil wears prada was that the movie i, I like that movie it was good this is a little different though you know, everybody's out to kill everybody in this. Everyone's out just to backstab everybody. In the fashion industry, you know, you're, you're I don't know, you're, all kinds of fashion-related stuff in this. It gets soap opera-ish, but this is a comedy, though. So it, it, it does take itself seriously, I guess. <laughs> but it's so outlandish. It's just so soap opera-ish. And all the women are just so vicious. It's... It's entertaining, but it's schlocky. You know, it, it's it's schlocky. I thought it was fun though, and so I got season two, <laughs> first class. There's some really funny stuff in it though. I thought. All right, next one here. This is one that I can't even review. It's called Nail, and uh, it, uh, it 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 it's seems good but it's so slow paced and relies so much on dialogue that i couldn't really assess it you know it's one of those rare instances where i just couldn't assess something um it's about like a it's like a thriller a real slow burn thriller about a series of crimes and whatnot i might give it a second chance i really don't remember a lot about it uh but there's it relies so much on dialogue i kind of you know gotta learn japanese i think maybe that's what i gotta do right i also bought the complex tv series uh i think hideo nakata directed the film right this is the tv series that supports and i think nakata directed this it's pretty good it's good it's it actually retains some of that horror element from the movie unlike the one miscall one that i just remember being just really flimsy in the horror department aspect I still think the movie's better than the TV series. The complex didn't get much much player attention. I don't know why. It was it was a good flick. But yeah, it was pretty good. And finally, the TV show that I spent like eight years trying to find. Sky High. This is the show that was uh concurrent with the film that was released in 2003 from Ryohei Kitamura. I love the movie took repeat viewing screen to appreciate it but awesome story i bought the tv series without subs and it's good it's good not as you know again how can you really assess it without subtitles but i enjoy it. i was looking for this for years i just wanted to watch it for you know and there it's good again this is about the uh the, the season two here this is about the girl who dies uh and you're given everybody's given three choices after they're if they're murdered you know you can get revenge and go to hell you can float in the world as a ghost and haunt or you could just uh 
forgive the person that murdered you and ascend and, and reincarnate. And it plays on that. And this is more of a drama, whereas the movie was more of kind of like an action drama. But I like the TV show. It's enjoyable. So that's it uh, for my Japanese collection here. And uh, really my Chinese language collection. So that's basically all my, my Asian TV series. There's not a lot. Uh, there's decent decent collection, but I'm going to add to them. i got to add, especially the K-dramas. There's at least like, I don't know, 15 K-dramas that I want to add to my collection at some point. They're, they're kind of expensive, though. You know what I mean? Especially when you get the legit copies. But I'll see what I could do the rest of the year. Oh, and next, I found a little a little patch. Well, I didn't find it. I just forgot. A little subsection of my TV series, our anime TV series. So that's what we'll be covering in the next video. Uh, not a ton of those, but there's some. And then after that, we'll get to the addendums. And then I'll have some more movie reviews for you coming out soon. I got some new movies uh, in the mail coming, so I'll review those. And we'll keep rolling. As always, I will see you next time.